Welcome back everyone, it's FNHUSA57 here. We are back on Neverwinter on the Xbox One. Today, with the update and basically kind of a cross between update and patch notes, so what's new for Mod 9 or Module 9, which is also the Maze Engine? So you'll see, uh, now this update took me a while to download, it was actually 6 gigs. Uh, it might take longer for you depending on your internet connection, but you'll see when you log in You'll see whatever mount you had equipped this little screen will pop up now in my case I Had the heavy twilight nightmare mount equipped so now there's been a lot of changes for mod 9 uh, quite a few changes for mod 9 actually and it's a bit of a personal preference um but there was a few minor graphical tweaks and things like that uh, to certain areas. The Q system was changed, which by far is probably my favorite addition to the game or update to the game. There is now public queues and private queues. So you can set up a private queue and you can invite members to that queue. This way, you don't have character class restrictions. So if you wanted, you could have all wizards or all clerics or whatever you possibly might want. Um, those are available to you. That makes it a lot easier. This way, you can pick and choose what you want. Uh, you can also queue publicly, too. Some new dungeons were brought back. Well, not necessarily new, but old dungeons that you might not be familiar with if you weren't a player from Mod 5. So these are leveling dungeons, basically dungeons that you have access to while you are leveling up. You have the Cloak Tower, you have Cragmire Crypts, which we all know, Grey Wolf Den that we all know, you have Pirate King's Retreat, that's a name change because it used to be Lair of the Pirate King. Frozen Heart, Temple of the Spider, which we all know. Caverns, that's a new one. And we get into the skirmishes. And I'm just showing you that, uh, you know, you have... This is under the tab for all queues. If you want, you can specifically change it now so you can see just the leveling dungeons, which are your regular dungeons. Just the epics, uh, which is nice because you have Kessel's Retreat. Now, these are all your level 70 ones. Shores of Torin, Malabog's Castle, Valindra's Tower, Lair of Lost Mouth, Temple of the Spider, which uh, basically has been changed to, um, you know, uh, Master instead of Epic is the terminology now. And the nice thing is it does show you the group requirements as well as, you know, giving you an estimated play time and showing you required item level, which is pretty nice. So for that one, you need one tank, one healer, three DPS, but if you queue with a private group, you can eliminate that requirement. Epic Cragmire Crips, or Master, uh, Master Grey Wolf Den, and what everybody has been waiting for to come back, Castle Never. So the boss isn't going to be the same in Castle Never, of course. Spoiler alert there, I won't tell you what he is, but you can go look it up for yourself. There is new loot, which is awesome there's a new set artifact set uh that's going to be of course you know artifact neck and waist i'm not sure if i'm gonna go with that set it doesn't the stats on it don't look really good all right so sorry about that where was i um yeah new artifact set i'm not sure if i'm gonna go with it because it's a little bit more of like a deflection rating but i'll check that out uh, you can get a new ring that's pretty awesome. There's just all kinds of new loot. There's two new enchantments, an armor enchantment, as well as a regular enchantment. Uh, basically all kinds of stuff. So we'll have to see on that. As far as skirmishes, still depressing. We don't have much. Uh, that's accessible at a level 70 character. Master of the Hunt, Dread Legion, Prophecy of Madness, Throne of the Dwarven Gods. Everything that we had before. Of course, the Master or epic demogorgon now it's a 10-man team so they say two tanks two healers four dps and then of course you have your cues for pvp so that's all the queue system which is eh, 
eh, good and bad at the same time. You know, personal preference. I really like it because they needed to change the queue system badly. Uh, they really needed to work on it, but uh, they finally did, which is just awesome. Uh, a big fear that everybody had is that the Lost Mouth set was going to have the set bonus removed from it, where you do an additional hit for weapon damage on a critical hit. But so far, that bonus is still there, so I will be keeping my Lost Mouth set. I might eventually switch to the Valindra set, not entirely sure, not really going to worry about that right away, only because of the fact that, eh, it's kind of here nor there. It's a personal preference type thing, and we'll go to that bridge when we come to it. So, in other news, we also have the addition of the Maze Engine campaign. So that's going to be a whole new campaign quest line. Yes, I will do a video on that. A whole new set of campaign boons. Can't wait for those because they're just going to make your character even more powerful. Uh, basically, just all kinds of good stuff coming out of that. New loot, new boons, new artifact set. Uh, just really awesome. Uh, so in addition to those updates, they have the biggest update of them all is the changes to the mount system. So if you go under mounts, you can see all your mounts, your current mount, and then you can put the mounts in the stable. So this is where it gets interesting because you can go into your mount and you can select a combat power, but you currently have no other mount combat powers. Okay, not a big deal you can equip a power. So what you do is you equip, all right, so for all of my uh, mounts, I've unlocked the dominant force. So that gives me 2000 power and I can equip that. You can also change your mount movement speed. Now this mounts an epic, so it standard has the 110 uh, movement speed. But if I were to go into the store, and I will go down to mounts because it should be there. Uh, an old mount that I had, the Winter Wolf. So I'll just go ahead and claim my Winter Wolf again. And go ahead and equip my Winter Wolf and show you that it comes up. And basically every mount you have, it unlocks new abilities. Uh, your new mount, Winter Wolf, following powers and movement speeds are now available for every mount you own. Okay, so basically it's... The only one available for that one is increases your mounted movement speed by 50%. That's not really that great, but I will show you what you can do now. Let's say I want to use that wolf. I right, well, technically, I could use that wolf. Um, and you'll see it's there in the stables now. So I can change to the winter wolf. And of course, I still have available the 2000 power. And I can change the speed bonus. I can make him 50% speed bonus. Or since I have the epic mount, I can go ahead and make him a 110 speed bonus. Which is awesome. So now you can ride around on a winter wolf, or any other mount for that matter, with 110% speed bonus. It's freaking awesome. Now, that mount does not look as cool as my Heavy Twilight Nightmare. So I'll stick with my Heavy Twilight Nightmare. Now, I know you're wondering about these combat powers and how does this all work and everything. Well, what you have to do is this is actually a really cool thing that they made. Because it could have gone one way or the other. It could have gone where all the collector mounts would be obsolete. They're not. All your collector mounts are still very useful, like your snail, uh, the coastal flail snail, the axe beak, all of those. Because what you do is you collect the mounts. Once you equip the mount... Then you can put its power on anyone else. So it's awesome. Any of your mounts that have a equip bonus, you can go ahead and put them on any other mount. Um, it's pretty insane, actually, that you can do that. But it's really good that, you know, like, I love the snail. 25% of your action points gained over 10 seconds after using a daily. But I hate the way the snail looks. So, 
why would I use the snail when I don't like the way it looks? Well, now I can make my heavy twilight nightmare have the same powers as that other snail or as an axe beak or whatever. You still need to own and equip the mount in order to get its powers, but then you can transfer those powers to any other mount. Awesome. I love that. It's still going to be expensive, but eventually I will get my snail and have that all set up. Now, another thing, you have the stable, which you can have five mounts in the stable. So those are ones that you can switch from and you can manage the insignias. Now, I don't have any insignias yet. They're going to be a dropped item. Uh, I'll do a video on farming insignias, but there's all kinds of stuff that you can get with insignias. You're going to have mounts that have two slot insignia slots and you'll have mounts that are the three slot insignia slots. So pretty cool there. Insignias are going to have all kinds of new bonuses. There are, I believe, five different insignia shapes. And they kind of work like enchantments where a crescent insignia slot, you have to socket a crescent insignia. But they're going to have all different types. Um, offensive ones that'll be like crit. Uh, some that might be like armor pen. I don't know what all the stats are going to be because I don't have them yet, but that's another thing for you to look at. Plus, you're going to have the ability of a insignia bonus, which is like a set bonus, but you're going to have to equip a very specific set of them, and then you'll be able to get different things. So here you can look at the insignia bonuses, and... There's a bunch of ones that are three insignias and a bunch of ones that are two insignias. Now, you cannot have three insignias equipped or a three insignia mount and use a two insignia bonus. So you have to pick and choose kind of carefully what you want. But there's all kinds of ones that look cool. Um, Oppressor's Reprieve, just, you know, looking at that right away, looks pretty cool. Uh, the one that I like so far the most is Barbarian's Reverie. When you perform a critical strike, you're healed for 1.5% of your maximum hit points. Phew, that's nice. And you all know how often wizards can crit or great weapon fighters can crit. So, you know, that's a pretty cool ability. Uh, but you have to match the insignias. So you have to be careful about that because the mount that you use now is going to have to have the right insignia slots so they made it even more complicated and tricky but i like it i really like it a lot and there's so many different ones here to choose from um you know that it's going to take a little bit when you perform a critical strike um your target will gain a stack you know this is another damage over time power which is pretty cool uh companions return um, you know, you have another one, Wanderer's Fortune. This is an interesting one for those people looking for refinement points. You have a 4% chance after killing a foe to find a refining stone at your feet. It's basically like a dragon horde enchantment for free. I love it. Uh, so many different ones here. Now, you can see that the two stat ones aren't as good um, as the three stat ones, but they're somewhat similar. Uh, oppressor's respite, you know, whenever you're stunned, knocked, immobilized, you're healed for 1% of your maximum hit points over 4 seconds. That's not bad. I mean, it's not great, but, you know, it's a little bit extra. Uh, the Barbarian Delight, which is a 2 stat, or 2 insignia one, you're only healed for half a percent of your maximum hit points every time you crit, versus if you have the mount that allows you to use that one with the 3 stats, you're healed for one and a half percent. So an extra one percent makes a pretty big deal, but you got to have the right mount. So we will be doing a lot with finding the correct mounts and rings and all of that good stuff. I will update my control wizard build now, and I will update my paladin build uh, just as soon as I get some of the new boons and the new setup and everything rolling. I'm going to go check out all the enchantments and everything like that. Uh, and just basically get that, you know, set up. As you can see, I still have my paladin. I actually have a bunch of level 70s now. Um, I got my control wizard, my scourge warlock, my paladin. I just got my great weapon fighter to 70. I've also got a devoted cleric at 70. So you'll be seeing a plenty more Neverwinter content. 
Don't get too confused by running around for all the new stuff. Just take your time. Build your character like you would any other way. So like here, I just logged in on my paladin. And you can see that I have the white tiger. Which now gives me the equip power armor breaker. So 2000 armor pen. And of course 110 movement speed for all of my mounts. Now unfortunately I don't have another mount on this character. You can see I only have one mount in the stable. Um, and he's got, you know, only the armor pen one to choose from. So I can't, you know, have the power on there because it doesn't transfer from character to character. So if you have a mount on one character, remember that, you know, you're not going to be able to switch necessarily that mount. Um, you know, you could swap it out, but the powers, if you unlock it on one character are not going to switch over to the next character's mounts. So you can't have like a snail on one character and expect to have its available bonuses on every character. Just keep that in mind. Um, because it is something that you know you're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with. Um, it's not gonna be perfect, but you're gonna have to pick a character and work on that character or that main character first. Paladins are still viable, which is awesome. Um, so, you know, it's basically business as normal. You know, work on getting your diamonds, work on getting the new insignias and the mounts, and just generally have a grand old time with the update. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, make sure you leave me a comment. Uh, otherwise, share the video, smash the like button, and remember to subscribe for more content. So, thanks for watching.